Bon après-midi, mesdames et messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, welcome to Via Real's annual public meeting. My name is Mariana Murat. I'm Senior Director of Communications for Via Real, and I will be your host this afternoon. Cette année encore, this year, we are once again holding this meeting as a webcast with the purpose of reaching as many Canadians as possible. This webcast is translated simultaneously. You may watch it entirely in English or entirely in French, depending on your choice. You can also follow this broadcast live. In this case, we'll be going back and forth between French and English, but there will be no translation. In order to choose the language of your choice, please click on the headset icon, which is on your screen. It is simultaneously translated in French and English and in its original language. Please click on the headphone icon to select the language of your choice to see this webcast. Je profite de l'occasion. I'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to all of those following us live on Facebook. So do through what's going to happen in the next hour. You will be hearing from Françoise Bertrand, chairperson of the board of directors, from Mr. Yves Desjardins Siciliano, chief executive officer of Via Rail Canada, and from Patricia Jasmin, our chief financial officer. We will be reviewing the financial results of 2017 and of the first quarter of 2018, and we'll be, we will be discussing some of the initiative that uh, the corporation launched in the past year. Following the speeches, we will be answering the questions that you, the public, sent us. But please note that we are also taking questions for the duration of the broadcast. So you can send them by email at questions at vrail.ca or on Twitter using the hashtag vrail. During the webcast, if you wish to, you can also send us questions live. Please write to us at questions at viarail.ca or use the via rail hashtag. A document answering all of the questions that we will have received during the last few weeks will be published on our website in the next few weeks. In the next few days as well, this webcast will be available, subtitled, on YouTube. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Françoise Bertrand, Chair of the Board of Directors of VRI Canada, to come and address herself to you. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Hello to everyone. C'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi. It is a pleasure for me to be able to participate in this second annual public meeting with VIA Rail. I am very happy to be able to start my speech with a very positive note. 2017, in fact, was a very successful year. It showed us great result in terms of ridership. We wish to thank our clientele for its loyalty and for taking the train more and more often. Thanks to those people, we have an upward trend that has maintained itself throughout the first quarter of 2018. Provide the energy and conviction we need to continually deliver better service to Canadians. Of course, we will still face our challenges, which we work to overcome and improve on every day. Today, as four decades ago, Via Rail is committed to transporting more passengers across Canada in a safe, sustainable, and accessible way. It has become part of our DNA to keep striving for better and to never rest on our laurels. In order to keep meeting the high expectations of our passengers, we have to push ourselves like every successful company. Over the past few years, Via Rail has been working on a company-wide modernization plan in order to better meet the needs of all Canadians. This year, Via Rail's efforts were recognized in the federal budget through a historical investment in our corporation. We thank the Government of Canada for their vote of confidence, and we are excited about what the future has in store for our passengers. 
the budget confirmed funding for the acquisition of a brand new fleet of modern trains, which means that within a few years' time, we will be welcoming our clients onto more comfortable and accessible cars. Our modernization plan also includes another important and ambitious project, which we are calling High Frequency Rail. Thanks to funding allocated through the most recent budget, further analysis will be done on the project, which should support the government decision-making process. L'an dernier, Last year, many people watched our annual public meeting with a lot of interest. But for a handful of them, our broadcast was particularly important as they were submitting their candidacy for our board of directors. These candidates were convinced that working with Via Rail would be both challenging and rewarding, although it is also demanding. And I am thrilled that the government has chosen them in order to join us today and to be able to participate in our board. They are present among us today, and I would like to take two moments to introduce them to you, and I'm very proud to do so. The colleagues of the board, first Jane Moat from Toronto, Ontario, Danielle Galvin from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Gail Stevens from Victoria, British Columbia, Kenneth Fenn, Richmond, British Columbia, Kathy Begg from Laval, Quebec, Glenn Rainbird from Belleville, Ontario, Geneviève Tanguay de Montréal, from Montreal, Quebec, Jonathan Goldblum, the uh, uh, meeting this afternoon, so he's excusing himself, and last but not least, Ramona Matéry from Vancouver, British Columbia. I'd like you to notice that we are six women, five men on the board, and that is the diversity challenge that our CEO is really promoting uh, really uh, very hard in the team uh, as well on the board. It is a remarkable time to be part of this Canadian institution as we continue making every effort towards our vision of a more modern via rail to better serve Canadians. The excitement is palpable at the board level and among all of via rail's outstanding employees who have contributed to our recent successes. In 2017, our great results are in part due to the celebration of Canada's 150th anniversary, which encouraged many people to explore Canada. Via Rail also made great efforts by both participating in and supporting numerous events and activities across the country. Through our own successful initiative, the Canada 150 Youth Pass, we invited young Canadians to discover their country, and we welcomed over 4,000 young Canadians on board our trains in July. This year, Via Rail is celebrating a historic milestone of its own. It was 40 years ago that the first official Via Rail train proudly displaying the company logo transported passengers in Canada. Our 40th year is a time to reflect and reminisce on this important part of our Canada's heritage. But even more, it is a time to look to the future. Over the last four years, Via Rail has been showing an upward trend that supports our vision of becoming the backbone of sustainable transportation in Canada. I'm looking forward to the coming years and to see what they will bring, as well as to actively contributing to the future of Via Rail alongside my colleagues on the board. Congratulations to the entire organization, led by a very talented team of managers and by our very energetic CEO. A special thank you to the impeccable onboard and customer care staff who are the faces of Via Rail and who serve our passengers with pride and in the same spirit that we find throughout the company. It is because of all of you that we are posting these praiseworthy results. 
I wish to thank you. Je travaillerai pas ailleurs qu'à bord des trains. Je vois du paysage, tellement agréable. Je veux dire, on voyage en train, même si on sert la clientèle, des fois, on a le goût de leur dire, regardez, on passe à côté du lac Ontario, ou regardez, il y a de la belle neige qui tombe. Il faut prendre le temps de regarder, parce que c'est ça le train aussi, c'est les paysages qui nous entourent. Le lac Ontario, avec le soleil qui se lève, ça aussi, lorsqu'on arrive à Montréal, avec le Five Rose, le vieux bar, je pense que ça, c'est les deux plus beaux, selon moi. La fenêtre de mon bureau est très agréable. Ça change tous les jours. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at this year's annual public meeting. Mon nom est Yves Desjardins Siciliano et j'ai l'honneur d'être le président chef de la direction de Viala. I have the honor of being the CEO. And then more good news. And then I'll forward into the future for more good news. This is a good news story. 2017, VRL produced again a stellar year of results. Il n'y a pas de doute que 2017 continue la tendance des années. Without any doubt, 2017 continues with the trend that is growth, whether it be in ridership as well as income. That there is a sustainable business to be built at VRL. More Canadians have chosen to spend more money riding on our trains more often than ever before. All across our services, you can see how our services are becoming popular for all sorts of reasons. A big reason is this reason. 35% growth in our business is a key success that nobody can ignore. But it is based on employees. Business is all about people. Faire des affaires, Doing business is putting people in contact with one another. As well as giving people the feeling that their work is important and that their interaction with clients can change lives or improve the quality of lives. That is what makes it that via rail employees do the work that they do and that they do so well. Commitment to service and to excellence that you see the financial results, the ridership's results that we have. For over that period of four years, the equipment has been getting older every year as the CEO of the company. Over those four years, we've run on the same infrastructure. Over those four years, we've dealt with the same climates and the same challenges that any large operation brings. So what's made the difference is not the equipment, is not the temperature, it's not the infrastructure, it's the people of VRL who have made the difference, as well as the way that they interact with clients. So thank you to each employee for that continuous effort, without which we would not be able to be as successful as we are right now. But that success is reflected not only with client satisfaction, but as well as their encouragement with those who have not yet become clients extends to those who haven't seen the light yet and haven't made the smart choice to take the train. For our clients are our best ambassadors. They are the ones who promote our services to their friends and family. And that is why we are growing ridership, not only by repeat business from current customers, but also by acquiring new customers. So thank you for our customers to continue to promote our services, for the more Canadians get on board these trains, the better we all are. And talking about a lot of Canadians taking that train, July 2017. En juillet 2017, In July 2017, over 4,000 young Canadians used the Youth Pass for the 150th anniversary of Canada in order to travel throughout the country from one ocean to the other to the other. 4,000 young Canadians discovered Canada. They built memories to last them a lifetime. Des souvenirs qui leur dureront tout. Memories that will last in their entire lives will have been produced by the people of Via Rail who put themselves at their service in order to celebrate Canada. 
And we've seen these testimonies throughout Twitter and Facebook, Instagram. Pictures of youth on our trains discovering the country and most importantly, discovering each other and what makes us proud to be Canadian. So thank you to all of them for their travels and to all our employees who supported that young crowd discovering Canada. But there were also tangible signs of changes at VIA in 2017. We've also brought tangible changes in our operations. We have increased we frequency between Ottawa and Toronto. And in this way, since 2014, ridership between Ottawa and Toronto has had nearly 40% in increase. Adding this 10th frequency, we have grown the Ottawa-Toronto market by almost 40%. Because having more frequency is the reason people take the train over their car. Because their car is always available. If train service is as available, almost, as your car, most people will make the smart choice to take the train, and this proves that case. We've also added stops, for example, here in Saint-Hyacinthe. On the corridor, by over 5%, by adding cars where traffic demands and taking cars off where there's less demand for traffic on giving periods of time. We've also continued our pursuit of Canadian products on board. On aime se vanter de servir des produits canadiens. We like to have Canadian products when we offer food and drinks, and so we have improved that offering in the past few years. And also to better serve our clients, we have improved technology of our calling centers. In Moncton and Montreal, are not only equipped with the best call center people in the industry, they're also equipped with the best technology available for call centers. And therefore, the dedication that they have shown to our customers when they call in for service will be enhanced by that technology. La combinaison de ne the combination of an agent in a call center with very modern technology will improve client services. And therefore, the results that will keep growing are anticipated. In 2017, we published our Sustainable Mobility Report, which shows once again our continuous commitment of reducing CO2 emissions. On our end, close to 30, by close to 34 percent since 2015. It's been to reduce our footprint by over 34 percent by enhancing our locomotives. We've also continued to promote our services and see how and explore how we can be of better service to the 400 communities we serve by meeting officials and boards of trades and all types of stakeholders across this great country. By meeting representatives of the different communities throughout Canada, we have been able to draw not only how we can improve our services today, but how we can keep improving them tomorrow with the projects that we are working on. And finally, we have doubled the number of passengers who have chosen to using, who use via rail services together with another mode of transportation. Over the period, and more passengers are combining the via service with a third party uh, intermodal service. But most importantly, the over 4 million passengers who've chosen via rail in 2017 reduced the carbon footprint of travel in Canada by 261,000 tons of CO2. Plus de 261,000 tonnes. Over 260,000 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions will have been eliminated from the air by people who have chosen to take the train rather than taking their car. And it is with that choice that an individual, it is that kind of, of, of choice that makes sense that individuals make and it improves the quality of life in their entire community choice to travel by train, make a choice to enhance the life of the rest of us who depend on quality environments, quality climates. Now what about 2018?
voilà. So there you have it. 2018, a contest. Un concours pour 2018. A contest for 2018 to launch a 40th anniversary of Via Rail. All that you have to do is to buy a ticket between the 17th of May and the 10th of June to be able to travel in Canada. I'm going on our website, no purchase necessary, and just enter to win one of 40 pairs of ticket allowing you to travel anywhere in Canada that VRL serves. That's our way of allowing 40 Canadian couples to travel and discover Canada. Mais ce n'est que début. And that's only the beginning. This contest, which allows either those who buy a ticket between the, between the 17th of May and the 10th of June, or by going online without ne necessarily buying anything, participating in this contest, allowing you to win one of 40 pairs of tickets made uh, that will allow you to travel throughout Canada anywhere that VRA goes. And these tickets are made of steel. And this will allow us to celebrate, or allow you to celebrate the 40th anniversary in your way. Prizes to mark this anniversary. There will be from time to time on some of our trains an anniversary car. And should you happen to be in that car, well, it'll be your birthday. À travers nos services, il y aura de temps Throughout our services, every once in a while there will be a train, an anniversary train, and if ever your seat is to be found within that one, it will be your birthday indeed. Therefore, many surprises are coming up. You will see, of course, our trains will be decorated with the 40th anniversary, and the rest of the year there will be initiatives as well to be able to keep going with the anniversary. Celebrating 2018 is start, start off the year maintaining the growth trend, trend that we've been on for the last four years. Le début de 2018 continue la, la the beginning of 2018 keeps going with the trend that started in 2014 with spectacular results. There's an increase in revenue of more than 11%, as well as ridership of over 12%. Is our friend. It is being maintained, as I said earlier, because our employees are maintaining that commitment to make people feel welcome and to make them feel well treated on board our trains. Cette tendance continue pour la raison que je mentionnais plus tôt. This trend continues for the reason that I mentioned earlier on, that is a continuous commitment on part of our employees that make it that our client feel welcome and they well that they are well treated when they are on board of our trains or when they call one of our calling centers. And we also have other surprises for 2018. Major projects. First, as Ms. Bertrand was mentioning it, thanks to the decision of the federal government that was announced in the March federal budget, they have relaunched their, their bid offer to acquire a new fleet for the Windsor Corridor. So all the equipment that is today serving between Quebec and Windsor will be replaced by a new fleet between now and 2024. 2018, as mentioned by Madame Bertrand earlier, the federal government gave VIA the authority and the funding to acquire a new fleet that will replace all the equipment currently available in the Quebec-Windsor corridor. And therefore, by 2024, rolling in this corridor will be a brand new 21st century fleet. But as well, we're renovating the fleet that is rolling in the rest of the country. We've announced several contracts to modernize that fleet from accessibility features to make the national fleet as accessible as the corridor fleet to facilitate the participation of more Canadians, regardless of their physical or other challenges to travel with VIA, we are modernizing that fleet. The rest of the VIA rail fleet will also be modernized outside of the Quebec-Windsor corridor. We've already announced many contracts in order to modernize it to make sure, for example, that it remains the means of transportation that is the most accessible for intercity transport. This will allow more Canadians, regardless of the mobility difficulties that they may be faced with, to be able to get on board a train and to cross the country. Because accessibility is one of the main reasons why the train service exists is one of the core missions 
of Villarreal, and it is one of the core reasons it exists. Et c'est pourquoi nous nous sommes engagés. And that is why we have committed ourselves to modernize all of our equipment, as we have been doing now, thanks to the support of the government of Canada, as well as acquiring a new fleet that will meet the highest accessibility standards, university accessibility standards. When we talk about accessibility, it's also about the rest of our environments, whether they be online or whether they be in stations. Ottawa Station is being updated to be really the landmark station in our network with regards to universal accessibility. We've installed elevators, we've installed uh, signage, and we are continuing to work in enhancing that station to make it the standard. So this is not so it's not only a question of trains and cars, but it's a question of accessibility throughout all the via rail services, whether it be online for people who can't hear or who can't see, or whether it be in our train stations. And for example, the Ottawa train station is being renovated. We've put in access ramps, elevators, high platforms in order to ease the access to our trains and to the station for people who have mobility issues. One needs to be surrounded by a great team. And luck would have it that I have the best team to run this company that any CEO could have ever asked for. And I'm pleased to be surrounded by them every day. And I hope they're as pleased as I am to be surrounded by me. Uh, but I'm pleased to be surrounded by, by them today. And I'm very happy to be able to share with you the fact that um, I work on a daily life with colleagues that are just as committed and just as ambitious as I am for the success of Rail. They are here with me today and I would like to introduce them to you. Starting with Linda Bergeron, Head of Human Resources, Martin Landry, Head of Commercial Affairs and the person responsible for the acquisition of the new fleet. Ms. Sonia Carivon, Head of Business Transformation and responsible for the High Frequency Train trans, uh, Project. Marc Beaulieu, Head of Transportation and Safety. Anne Goutier, Head of Communications. Mario Bergeron, Head of Mechanics and Maintenance. Robert Saint-Jean, Active Head and Chair. Jean-François Legault, Head of uh, Judicial Affairs and Risks. And finally, Ms. Gabrielle Caron, Corporate Secretary. These are talented people committed in the service of their citizens who leave no ambition objectives unexplored and in whom no challenge is not too big that they won't be able to meet it. Challenges and never see any task too big to not be met. We are blessed to have them as members of this team. But there's one member left and it's now my pleasure to introduce the last but not the least member of this team. Le dernier mais non le moindre membre de cette grande The last but not the least head of financial or chief financial officer Patricia Jasmin. Thank you Eve. Hello. I am so happy to be amongst you today in order to share the financial results for 2017 which was a very important year for Vireal. We're strong with increases of 12.8% and 10.5% respectively compared to 2016. This result was achieved through an end cycling of our trains and the optimization of capacity to better align with customer demand. Dans l'ensemble, les revenus de Viara... Overall, Via Rail's revenues for 2017 increased to $366 million. This amount includes passenger revenue, which reached nearly $343 million, and an additional $23 million of station and third-party revenue. The revenue increase is attributable to an improved service offering, including added and optimized capacity in the corridor east, as well as an increase in average fares for most major train services. Our operating expenses total $593 million, that is a 6.9 increase compared to 2016. This growth stems in part from the added capacity deployed in the corridor, 
as well as the additional cost related to on-time performance issues that particularly affected the Canadian service, which runs between Toronto and Vancouver. Contributions to our pension and benefit plans totaled $33 million in 2017 compared to $37 million in 2016. This slight increase is associated with higher costs for employee compensation. This financial performance enabled us to slightly reduce government operating fund to $265.3 million, which is a $2 million or 1% decrease compared to 2016. To reduce the government funding, to 265 million, which is 2 million or 1% lower than 2016. In 2017, the government subsidy represented 42% of our overall operating expenses. This is an improvement of three percentage points compared to 2016, meaning that Via Rail reduced its dependence on taxpayer dollars once again this year. That was one of the goals Via Rail set for itself, and we're very pleased to have achieved it again this year. Now, in terms of capital investments, a total of $88 million was invested in improving service for passengers. The biggest investments went to the following projects. $29 million for station-related projects, including Ottawa, Oshawa, and Kingston. $17 million for rolling stock projects, including $12 million for the LRC car refurbishment program, $16 million for information technology project, such as our reservation system, our planning and capacity management system, and our training program for locomotive engineers. And finally, $15 million for infrastructure projects, like the program to improve track and rail crossings, on infrastructure owned by Via Rail. Reflect like the success of Via Rail in the past few years. We have been working to modernize and improve our service, and we are thankful to the passenger who support us every day. And now, thanks to the Government of Canada, this modernization will continue. As previously mentioned by my colleagues, funding has been allocated to acquire a brand new fleet of trains for our Corridor service. We are excited and proud to know that we will be able to offer Canadian a more comfortable ride, and I look forward to the coming years of further improvement. Merci. Thank you. My name is Zach, and I'm an onboard service attendant with Via Rail, and I love to create memorable moments for our passengers. What's your name? Un ballon qu'on fait aujourd'hui? Where are you from? C'est quoi votre couleur préférée? Do you like pink too? On va gonfler un tout petit peu. Since when I was 16 years old, I was performing at kids' birthday parties. Very much a passion of mine since I was a child was magic and entertainment in general. It's been two years I've been with Via Rail, and since day one, I asked myself, why not mix my passion with my job, and hence what I've created. Oh, man. High five here, Liam. Just like that. I'm taking moments and turning them into memories for all of our clients and the passengers we have on board. Bravo. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. I approach them with my bag of tricks, which I carry with me everywhere. I never leave home without it. And I make them balloons. I do some magic tricks. I juggle. I do plate spinning, all while the train is in movement. Comme ça, voilà. Alors. From what I did when I was younger to what I'm doing now, it's really been a nice blend of entertainment as a whole. That video shows you why our employees are our best ambassadors. I'd like to thank Madame Jasmin for having given us the 2018 results. The reason why we hold our annual public meeting is the opportunity to hear from you, the public. So along with the invitation to participate today, we had asked you to send us your question about VRL. Your enthusiastic response showed us that you are not only engaged, but that you are very much interested in our public, in the public service we offer. In fact, as of this morning, we have received more than 1,500 questions. So many of you were curious about the same questions, and certain questions were asked multiple times. 
Therefore, for the first time this year, we've compiled the 20 most asked questions and put them to a vote. Once again, you showed your interest and you voiced your opinion. We've gathered the 10 questions that received the most votes and the top 10 will now be answered by our president and CEO, Mr. Yves Desjardins Siciliano. Merci, Mariana. Alors, Thank you, Mariana. So yes, in fact, here are the 10 most popular questions which were asked or which were voted rather by the public. Top, top 10 questions that the public selected and therefore make them the most popular. Question number 10. I'll do them going from 10 to 1 just to make it more exciting. When will VRL add more bike racks uh, to the trains? So I, I like the word add more back tracks, uh, add more, because we don't really have any, but uh, the intent is the same. The, uh, the new fleet that we've announced in terms of the, uh, the new corridor fleet, uh, being a 21st century fleet, uh, will be uh, able to accommodate large objects like skis and bikes uh, and, and the likes. And so starting as soon as the delivery of the first cars, 2022, to 2024, uh, bike racks will be available. So the first question was, when will Via Rail add more bike tracks to their trains? And um, we don't really have any right now. Uh, it's more, you know, we try to accommodate uh, as reasonably as possible people with bikes, but more often than not, we can't. So the answer is that with the new fleet that is coming up and that was announced earlier on, they should be uh, available as of 2022. Uh, from 2022 to 2024, this will be able to accommodate bigger objects, specifically bikes. Why is the cost of tickets for shorter routes sometimes as high as longer routes between larger cities? Should it not be based on distance? So, although the distance typically is the basis for the pricing structure, there are other factors that affect the pricing uh, and the fares that are displayed. One being capacity constraints, or the other way to look at it, demand for that service. Then the nature of the market in terms of not only uh, distance, but also the type of market. Is it a business uh, market or a uh, leisure uh, segment uh, market? And then the notion of competition uh, in that market from other modes of transport, including obviously the car. Juggling all of these uh, uh, elements brings us to the pricing regime. But I can tell you, if we look at a specific example, for example, Toronto, Ottawa versus Toronto, Kingston, Toronto, Ottawa today, the lowest fare, is $48, whereas Toronto Kingston is $44. So clearly, uh, it's a lower fare for a shorter distance. But again, from time to time, you'll have the reverse based on these factors. La question number nine was, why is the cost of tickets for shorter routes sometimes as high or more expensive as for longer routes between two larger cities? Shouldn't the price reflect the distance. So yes, in fact, mainly the price is based on the distance, but there are other factors to be taken into account as well. And one of them is the available capacity on that particular segment, the demand for that segment for on the part of uh, the travelers, as well as the nature of the segment. That is to say, is this a, a, tr a place where there's more tourists or more business travelers, and finally competition on the part of other modes of transportation, of course, including cars. But generally speaking, prices are lower for shorter distances. And I have an example here between Toronto and Ottawa and Toronto Kingston. Between Tor Toronto and Ottawa, the lowest price is $48, which is a longer distance, and Toronto Kingston, which is at $44. So that is the standards, but of course, sometimes there are exceptions. When will we see the new train fleet in the Quebec City Windsor corridor? La nouvelle flotte est pour quand dans le corridor Quebec Windsor? As I said, when we will see the new uh, fleet? Uh, remarks uh, starting 2022 all the way to 2024. That new fleet will be available in uh, the corridor. I was mentioning earlier on, the new fleet will be available 
as of 2022 until 2024 when the total present fleet is replaced. As an anxiety on your part for a new fleet, and I welcome that anxiety and I share it with you. Alors merci pour cet encouragement d'aller de l'avant avec cette nouvelle flotte. Thank you for your encouragement to go forward with this new fleet because the government has heard you. Can you improve the Wi-Fi on board? Le Wi-Fi à bord pourrait-il être amélioré? Could the Wi-Fi on board be improved? Are you working on it? The Wi-Fi on board uh, should be, could be, uh, made better, could be enhanced, and we're working on it. It is a challenge. It's a challenge based on a variety of factors, one being the different type of cars that are in that corridor that give different propagation qualities to the environment. But we are working at uh, empowering or growing the power or the ability of that, the systems to support more demand. Because in the course of the last five years, as you may expect, due to mobile devices, and other applications, the demand for Wi-Fi has just grown exponentially. It is beyond a hockey stick. It is a straight line going up year, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. So the ability of those systems to support growing demand for people who have more devices and more usage uh, for their devices and more passengers on the same cars uh, than we've ever had before creates the compounding effect that we're short on, on, uh, on the delivery from time to time. So, more to come. Obviously, again, the new, the new fleet will have a Wi-Fi system that will be state-of-the-art and will be built from the ground up with the new equipment versus the retrofits that we're doing today. In the meantime, we're continuing to try to enhance uh, the system and reduce the inconveniences to our customers. Alors, oui, c'est un défi, améliorer le Wi-Fi à bord. Surtout dans un contexte. Yes, we do want to improve it because there's more and more people that have more applications, that have more devices with which they have access to Wi-Fi on board the train. And on top of that, there are more passengers on board of each train. So the combination of usage, more frequent usage, and of more people at the same time makes it that our ability to support all of those different users as well as usages is becoming more and more limited. We continue to try to improve the service within the complexity of a mixed environments, such as what we have right now. We have three different kinds of equipment in the corridor, but we continue trying to improve it to the best of our ability with, of course, the ray of hope, which is the replacement of the fleet, because a new fleet will come with a Wi-Fi system that will have been designed for the kind of fleet in which it will be, rather than what we have right now, which are retrofit systems that were added, obviously, since the fleet, uh, you know, is older than the internet. And so the Wi-Fi was added after. So the broadcast is not as uh, great as it could be. The Churchill be repaired and ready for passenger use. When will the line to Churchill be repaired and ready for passenger use? Well, as you may know, uh, the the uh, government uh, of Canada is in negotiations with the owner uh, of the uh, of the, that railway infrastructure as well as the province, and as soon as uh, those issues are addressed and the railway infrastructure is brought up to our safety standards, we will we will resume service. But we have no visibility as to when that is. The only thing I can assure you is we will not be running a passenger train on an infrastructure anywhere in Canada, including Churchill unless it is safe for passengers to board. The answer is complicated, of course, because right now the government of Canada, as well as the uh, Manitoba government and the owner of the present infrastructure are all having discussions as far as the upgrade of that particular infrastructure. Via Rail has committed itself to set up the service again as soon as infrastructure is safe. The only thing that I can assure you of is that we will not run a passenger train service where the infrastructure is not safe for the passenger, regardless of where that infrastructure is to be found, including Manitoba. Why are, fi where, why are fares so high? Can you offer lower prices? Why are fares so high? Can you offer them? Can you lower them? Question last year, it seems to me. And uh, my answer is always the same. I, I don't think fares are high at all. As a matter of fact, I think fares are quite reasonable uh, when you compare what the alternative is. If you compare the price of fuel and parking 
in a metropolitan area, and then the amortization of your car and insurance and the rest of it, I think our fares are way below uh, that cost to you. And therefore, I believe that uh, we should all be prepared to pay for services rendered, and therefore, I'm comfortable with the price, prices as they are today. Cette question m'est posée souvent et elle m'a été That question is often asked and it was asked to me last uh, week, last year, and my answer is the same. To me, the prices seem to be very reasonable. When you compare them to the alternative of your car, uh, the price of parking, of gas, and you add the amortization of the cost of your car, clearly the via rail prices, the economy price between two cities, regardless of where it is in Canada, is a lot less than your car. Therefore, in my opinion, it is reasonable, and people have to be ready to pay a reasonable uh, price for a superior service, which is the case in Via Rail, and therefore I am satisfied that the prices are reasonable. The Gaspé service. Resume. When will train service resume in Gaspé? Same answer as Churchill. Hands of a provincial agency here in Quebec. As soon as the infrastructure is brought up, to safety standards for passenger rail, we will resume service on one of the most scenic uh, routes in Canada. As I was mentioning it in the past, as soon as that infrastructure is once again updated and is safe for passenger rail, we will start again with the service. It is one of the most scenic places in Canada. When will we see the high frequency rail project be implemented? Well, not soon enough, unfortunately, is my answer to that. But the, 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 uh, we are hoping that should we get a positive decision from our government within the next year, four years within that decision, the high-frequency rail project will be deployed between Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, or any of those segments within which the government will have provided authority and financing. Quand le projet de train à grande fréquence... Uh, so when will... We see the high-frequency rail project be implemented well as soon as possible as far as we're concerned. But of course, we have to wait for the decision of the shareholders. And once that decision will be made, within four years, we believe that the infrastructure will be finished and it will really Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, or any other segment amongst those, any segment that the government will have chosen to finance. What is being done to improve VRL's on-time performance, especially for the Canadian service in Western Canada. So we are on that service challenged. Why? Because freight service between Toronto and Vancouver is extremely busy. The good news for Canadians is Canada's economy is booming. The bad news for passenger rail service is that Canada's economy is booming. And therefore, freight lines are very busy with long, heavy, slow freight trains. And VIA runs on that same infrastructure. And therefore, uh, our time to destination is getting longer and longer and more and more unpredictable. That is the problem. The solution is that we're working with our partner, our infrastructure partner, who shares our concern for this deteriorating, deteriorating service. And hopefully, within the next few weeks or months at the most, we will have plans to announce to try to enhance the service in a way that the trip time will be what the trip time is because of congestion and because of uh, traffic on that line. But hopefully, the on-time performance will be predictable. So we won't be able to make the trip time shorter, but hopefully our desired outcome is to have a trip time that is predictable so you can make plans on your departure time and plans on your arrival time. La question, quels sont les the question is, what is being done to improve your rail's on-time performance, especially for the Canadian in Western Canada? So the problem with the Canadian is a pretty simple one. Via rail shares the merchandise trail track from Toronto to Vancouver. And that segment is very, very busy because the Canadian economy is doing very well. And when the Canadian economy goes well, well, the freight trains are full, they're slow, and they occupy a lot of the railway. And therefore, the passenger trains, of course, suffer from this economic boom, and therefore, 
it takes longer to get to a place and punctuality becomes very deteriorated. That is what the problem is. The solution is, in collaboration with our partner, the owner of the infrastructure, we want to find a way of establishing the schedule of a train, not in order to shorten uh, how long it takes. That's not possible because congestion is what it is, traffic is what it is. But what we have to do, however, is to give clients a departure and arrival time that are predictable. If we can, at the very least, introduce predictability in departure and arrival time already, we'll have done a good part of the work despite congestion due to the success of the Canadian economy and uh, for which, you know, we're all doing better. Most popular question asked by Canadians of this CEO, why can we not select our seats, seat direction, while booking our trips online? Now, that is the most interesting question I'm ever asked. In the last four years, I must have talked to over 12,000 Canadians on our trains, because I talk to people on our trains every week when I travel on via trains. And that is the single most asked questions. And people tell me all the time two things. I hate traveling backwards, okay? And why don't we travel, why don't we have trains in Canada like they do in Europe? Well, guess what? In Europe, half of the time you're traveling backwards. But for some reason, it doesn't bother us when you're in Europe, but here in Canada, sometimes it bothers us. More seriously, uh, for those who are inconvenienced by traveling backwards, our new reservation system that we are currently uh, starting the development of this year will allow passengers to select their seats. And since we will have a predictable fleet, one fleet, which all the same cars design the same way, you'll be able to know for sure that if you pick a forward-looking uh, forward seat, you'll be facing forward when you sit in that seat. So we are aware of the issue, and we are working on it. Our onboard crews do a great job trying to accommodate passengers when there's room in the train or in the car to allow them to change seats if they're inconvenienced. But in the meantime, our best uh, efforts uh, cannot always satisfy everyone. But know that your concern has been noted, and seat selection will allow you to make that selection in due time. So why is it not possible to choose the seats or the seat direction while booking trips online? That is the question that I have to answer the most often on board trains where I speak with clients every uh, every year. I must have spoken to over 12,000 people in the past four years, and that question comes back over and over with another comment, which is, why don't we in Canada have trains the way they do in Europe? because everybody wants to have, you know, trains in Canada like in Europe. But in Europe, 50% of the time, you are going backward. But it would seem that in Europe, it's not as bothersome. But in Canada, people seem to be more bothered by it. No, but seriously, that problem will be resolved by the new reservation system, which, using a unique fleet throughout the corridor, thanks to the new fleet coming up, will allow you to select your seats with the assurance that if you select a seat that faces the direction of travel, you will have that seat when you get on board the train. So that is a solution that is more long-term. Call center, and the call center would try to accommodate your request for front-facing, uh, direction-facing seats. Uh, and uh, most of the time, uh, that will work unless there's a last-minute change of equipment. In the meantime, you can always call the call center, which will give you a forward-facing seat. Although sometimes for operation reasons, we have to change the equipment at the last minute. And the result is that you might be in a seat that will be traveling backward. But uh, that's bother waiting for the new fleet. And uh, so that is an end to the questions. Thank you very much. We decided to travel um, across Canada because Via Rail had a deal about $150 for the whole month of July, so you could go anywhere you wanted. And I called him and said, there's a pass, it's $150, you have to buy it right now. I stopped on the sidewalk <laughs> on my phone and I bought it right there. It was like the golden ticket for Charlie's Chocolate Factory that you got. Ah, uh, we got it! We thought, obviously for breakfast, we wanted cereal, so we have some boxes of cereal, some breakfast sandwiches, and then for dinner we just like love noodles, so this seems like the easiest. We just get hot water and we're good. Alright, 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 alright! Are we ready? Yeah! Traveling even outside of the country 
sometimes is cheaper than traveling inside our own country. So with this promotion, it actually ended up for the first time ever being cheaper. Pourquoi aller ailleurs visiter l'Europe quand tu peux commencer par ton propre pays qui est le Canada là? I think it's extremely important that you get to experience Canada maybe as the way it was built. You get to see all the scenery that like you wouldn't normally see if yeah. you were driving or if you were flying over or anything like that, right? And you don't have to worry, you can kind of just enjoy it. I mean, our world is going way too fast and the train, it goes just the right speed. <laughs> I also enjoy all these announcements too, You're getting a little bit of tour of things, they don't just, uh, they don't just rush. <laughs> I met like four guys in the Wi-Fi lounge. I think the night after the train, we decided to all go out to a bar together. And we ran into a couple other groups while we were there. And so they were like, oh, are you guys like lifetime friends all traveling together? We're like, no, like we've known each other for maybe 48 hours. Uh, the best way I could describe it is it's like summer camp for adults, in a sense, <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't know where I belong. I don't know where I Je voyageais avec deux de mes amis, euh, puis on a eu la chance de se rassembler avec euh, Via Rail 150. Alors, euh, ça faisait longtemps qu'on s'est pas vu tout ensemble. So, we're starting in Union. We're heading over to Manitoba, stopping in Portage La Prairie. We're gonna do some fishing, maybe snag some big ones. Je viens de venir de Tom Vancouver au Jasper. Et maintenant, je vais aller à Halifax et à la baie du Québec. Je ne veux pas être en voyage, je rencontre d'autres personnes, je forge une nouvelle personnalité. Donc euh, j'espère en revenir euh, changer puis, euh, dans un bon sens. C'est inoubliable. Ouais. <rire> Thank you, VRL. Thank you, VRL, for this opportunity. Merci, Viaray. Thank you, VRL, for the 150 pass and the absolutely awesome experience I've had so far. Thank, Thank you, VRL, for, for the 150 pass. Exactly. <laughs>